everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props. In today's video, we are gonna be looking at the new PyoCreate Halot X1. It's a resin printer, and it's got some different things that really set it apart from a lot of the other resin printers out there. So PyoCreate reached out to me to see if I would run some resin through their new resin printer, the Halot X1. Now, this is actually a Kickstarter program that they're running, we'll talk about that in a minute. And if you haven't heard of PyoCreate, this is, you know, Halot, you've heard of Halot. Uh, that was Creality, right? So Creality has spun their resin printers off into PyoCreate. So how we'll run the video is like how we run a lot of these review videos or first look videos. And this is really just a first look video. I haven't had a chance to run a ton of resin through it. Uh, probably uh, two bottles full, um, and uh, I've had some good results, and we'll look at those later. But how we'll do the video is, we will uh, go over the tech specs of it, we'll take a look at the Kickstarter, then I'll show off some prints, I'll give a pros and cons, uh, we'll talk about the differences between uh, maybe what I have right now and what the final version might be, and then if you hang out to the end, or you can jump to the end using the chapters, you can see the assembly, uh, you know, spoiler alert, there's not a lot to assemble, but I go through everything that's in the box and a lot of the other little pieces, parts that come with the printer. So let's get into it. Let's talk about what sets this apart from some of the other resin printers out there. A quick look at the Kickstarter plan. It is already well past its $100,000 goal at $155,000. Of course, if you scroll down, you can see the different uh, pledges you can make for just the printer and different accessories or whatever iteration you want of it. So just head over and take a look. Now, one of the accessories that you can pick up for this is the AFU, the automatic feed unit. And you might have guessed what that does is it actually feeds resin and heats it, which is cool, into the printer. And then once it sees that it's getting low, it will feed more and then it will also take the resin out and put it back into the jug. So that's kind of neat, and that's also where the RFID reader is. It's in this AFU, so once you put the bottle down in the resin that has the RF reader on it, then it will actually know what resin you're printing with, which is pretty cool. Now it is kind of neat that the AFU, if you have it, has that RFID, so if you've got the PyoCreate resin, it'll just read which one it is. But I wish it had um, like the um, Creality uh, HI, I wish it had the a sensor for the RFID like on here. Like maybe it's, it's here and you touch it up here and it reads it. Or, you know, you put it, you know, here or somewhere and it will read it. Uh, so put that same RFID reader on the printer as well so that people can take advantage of that if they don't buy that unit. Okay, so right off the bat, let's just take a look at how this thing looks. Now, all my other resin printers and FDM printers, they're all black or graphite, really dark, and I kind of dig how this is really light and vibrant. I like the white. Now, I was told that some of these colors may change. I don't think the outside, it's sort of mostly having to do with the tray. I think I've seen a few videos people have done where their trays are, uh, their vats are black and mine is still uh, sort of like a chrome color. So some of those things might change, but I don't think this outside packaging is going to. And uh, I like it. I like the white light design of it. I think it looks really bright and uh, fresh and uh, I like it, I kind of dig it. Now, if we keep looking at the exterior, uh, we can see that this is a flip top, so it sort of has a nice handle up front, which I like. Uh, some of the other resin printers that I use, they don't, and I see people having the rig jury rig things. So this has got a nice handhold right here. Uh, it doesn't stay at every angle, so if I left it here, it would drop. You've kind of got to bring it all the way up for it to stop, which I mean, why wouldn't you just want to bring it all the way up? There's no really reason to have it lower, but I did notice that. Um, the other thing, if we look at the outside that I like are these uh, handholds on the bottom. So they're on each side, so you don't have to sort of get your fingers under the printer. You can just sort of reach on right here. And it's little things like that that I really like, because it, you know, someone was thinking, geez, let's make this thing easier to move around, especially if it's for like a hobbyist or someone who's just getting going, or you know, someone who has a, a print farm and wants to just pick these things up quick and move them around. I really liked that little detail. Then one of the main differences we see here is our, of course our screen is on top. A lot of you ones you're seeing on the sides, or I'm sorry, the fronts. 
We also have our USB up top, and I like that. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, I don't know if the, the USB that you would plug your printer into or your computer into should be up here. Uh, I think that would be kind of weird to have the cable running up over. I think this one should be in the back. But I like that the USB is up here, if you still use a USB, because this thing does have Wi-Fi, so you can just sort of connect it over Wi-Fi and print that way. I do that more than anything at this point anyway. But I do like that at least that the USB stick is up there. So let's go and take a look at the inside and talk about some of that technology. Okay, so this comes with a 10.1 inch 16K mono screen, and like also most uh, modern resin printers. It comes with auto leveling, so you don't have to do any of that. Now the build volume for this is 211.68 by 118.37 by 200. So you've got plenty of space to work here. Uh, I've been printing out some large statues and things like that, which we'll look at in a little bit. And I've been really liking the compact size of the printer with the build plate size volume. To get a really smooth motion, it comes with dual linear rails and dual lead screws. This improves the Z-axis stability and precision, achieving a 0 0.01 millimeter positioning accuracy throughout the printing process. And I have to say, the prints are pretty clean, the ones that I've been kicking out. And I love the VAT. It is super easy to put down, and I love these handles. But now, the biggest thing that this thing does is the actual light source is the thing that goes to the build plate. So this is gonna help with plate adhesion, with stability, with lift off, and it is pretty cool to watch. Look at this time lapse. It is, you know, there it is. I've, I don't think another printer does this where the light source and the vat move up and down to actually create the print, leaving the build plate unmoved. But one of the most interesting things that I found with this printer, and I think a lot of people are gonna really dig, is um, the build plate. Now, it's really interesting in that it's its own flex plate. So you don't have to sort of, you won't, technically, you won't have to buy a third-party flexible plate for this to get your prints off. It flexes itself. So the little black handles here, when you move them this way, it's almost like an ice cube tray. The little squares that you can see here push down and pop the actual print right off of the build plate. And I've done it a number of times and it works every single time. It just pops it right off and you use the tray that came with it to pop it into that. I probably won't. I will just take it over to my garbage can. <laughs> I've got this garbage can that I just get rid of all those sort of clippings and pieces with. I will pop it off over there because I just don't need another thing to clean. Resin printing is messy enough. I don't like the bibs and the little trays. Uh, I don't even use those, uh, but I'll just snap it into the trash. And man, it works really, really great. One thing I did notice is if there is a support base that is on directly on the uh, part that pushes out, the rectangles that push out that help the pop, if it's on there, it's not gonna come out. So you're, cause it's in that area, there's nothing to make it move, right? Nothing to make it pop off. So you are going to have to scrape it sometimes to get that stuff off of there. I would always, of course, check it anyway, just in case something didn't come off. One of the other interesting things about the build plate is when you slide it into the printer, it's very loose. And I was very worried, like, oh my God, am I missing something? I looked through the instructions. It doesn't say anything about that. But what happens is, once you start printing, it clamps down on, the this part of the unit clamps down on the actual build plate to keep it from moving around like that, keeping it even so that it'll actually do the printing. Now, I didn't know that, I was a little worried, but it goes ahead and it does it automatically, so there's really nothing to do but slide it in. Okay, so now let's take a look at some of the prints I did. Okay, so the first thing I printed off was this invincible statue. You can get this actually over on my website, 3dprintedprops.com, and you can see that it pretty much captured every little bit of detail. I mean, in the hair, the goggles, just his facial expression. Of course, the detailing in his suit, all the little textures. The text looks really crisp, really clean the textures on the rock. Uh, overall, I think this turned out really, really well. Like, look at that in the ears, the stitching. 
Uh, really, really clean print. And I believe this took six hours. So this is Jeff from Marvel Rivals. And you can actually get this over on my site too. I've got about 20 files from armor, everything for Marvel Rivals. But again, super clean. Uh, the teeth, the eyes. I'm holding it like this because I didn't wash it long enough and it is a little sticky. You can see a bunch of goo right there. That is not the res that's not the printer. That's a really poor wash job. Now this is actually a file from Wicked 3D and this is Ash. This is for a statue I'm working on from him. I love his files. And this is primed actually. You can see, look at, look at the detail in the teeth and in the eyes. And lastly, we'll finish with this crazy thing. This is again for that um, same um, Evil Dead uh, big, huge diorama thing I'm working on from Wicked 3D. And uh, his Patreon information is below. But again, you can see just great, great detail in this printer. And a good size, you know, obviously it fit, you know, this very, very easily. Uh, but so far, I have been really, really pleased with the prints I'm getting from this. And uh, yeah, really happy. So let's do a quick pro and con. Again, this isn't a complete review, so I don't have like this extensive pros and cons. And again, some of these things will definitely change because this is a really a production model, I would think. And uh, the final ones coming through on Kickstarter will probably be different and have different sort of little tweaks to them as you know I give them and other reviewers give them. And of course, their engineers find out. But from my model alone, pro, I really love the build plate. I think it's really interesting. I was worried about it at first uh, because it's not crazy flat. There's a little bit of move, you know, there's, it does, when those two, you know, rectangles in the slots, they don't line up perfectly, perfectly. So I was worried there'd be some problems there, but you know, I didn't have any failures with my prints. So it must be working. I also, of course, like that I can just do that little crack movement and the thing just pops right off. That was very cool. Now, the quality of the prints, they look sharp. I really have no complaints there. I like how it looks. Uh, it's quiet. Software is easy to use, Wi-Fi. So it's got all the basics down pretty well. I do like the movement of the base. Supposedly that is to help with, uh, you know, uh, adherence to the build plate and not making it such a suction to that. Uh, you know, all I know is it worked and I thought it was kind of neat that the vat goes up and down. So that was pretty cool. So con-wise, again, these could all be totally changed. This is going through Kickstarter. It's still being developed. Um, there would be some tweaks and some changes. One thing I would have liked to have seen is something in the instructions that is gonna is telling me that this build plate, when I'm just slide it in and it'll lock itself. Because I really was for a while there going like, I don't, I think this is broken or I think I need to put some screws somewhere. Uh, why is this so loose? Uh, but I just hit print and it worked. And at the end it said, you know, click OK or something to disengage the, the build plate and it would release it and you could take it out. So something that's gonna tell me in the instructions that it's supposed to be like that, then it's loose. Second thing, again, this could be something they'll be working out. When I got it, there was a cable that was sort of just sticking out in the inside of the device. And I didn't know where it was supposed to go. And then I realized, oh, this must be for the AFU. And it was, I watched somebody else's video, uh, Joel's, and he plugged it into something that I don't have. So yes, I had to guess that it was the AFU. So. You know, if they're going to be shipping these out and people aren't going to be getting those, that cable knee should be taped down uh, so that people aren't trying to wonder where to go with it, what to do with it. But that's a very, very minor thing. Uh, other than that, I, you know, for the couple things of resin I ran through it, I didn't really have any problems. So that's my first look at the PyroCreate Halot X1. You know, I'm going to put it in rotation. Uh, it kicks out some really clean prints. Uh, I had consistent printing. I had one failure, uh, but that was totally my fault. I, again, I do this all the time. I forgot to put supports in the file. I mean, I just sliced it and was like, why didn't it work? 
my fault. So uh, it definitely will go over there on the shelf and I will be using it often and look forward to getting that AFU so I can test that out as well. And of course, I'll do another video to show that off. If you want, hang out to the assembly of this. If not, I appreciate you watching and have a great day. Okay, so let's start assembling the PyoCrate Halod X1. So the first thing, we'll just take a look at the resin really quick. They sent me a box of resin and it's 1K, which is really nice. So we've got the resin and the one thing we can see on the resin and the bottom, if we look, is an RFID tag. So the printer will know what resin we put in it. So that's nice. We're gonna put that off to the side and go ahead and start the unboxing. And this is the one thing that I love about this electric desk. All I've got to do is just keep lowering that or hit the higher button, <laughs> keep lowering it, and I can get into this thing really simple to show it off. I love having one of these in the shop. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, right off the bat, we've got our instructions and a simple power cable. This looks like a uh, bib or some type of tray for removal of, of the plate. Under another piece of, oh, nope, then we just got one more thing of foam here. Very well packed. It's got those corner guards that I like, those sturdy, uh, really heavy duty corner guards. I like those a lot. So now we've got just the unit in plastic. Let's see how easy it is to get that off. I think I'm just gonna put it on the floor and get it out. Okay, so it is out of the box. It's wrapped in plastic. Let's just go ahead and remove that. One thing I'm noticing right off the bat, wow, the color is a lot different than a lot of the other printers I've been looking at. It's, it's not all dark colors and everything. It's very bright and vibrant. So we've got a piece of tape here holding the lid on. Just take that off. Lift the hood and take out some more styrofoam. First layer of styrofoam is the build plate. So we'll set that there. Always look through your foam. Because I think there's something in here. But there might not be. Yes, there is. And in here we have the usual suspects, we've got uh, a nice metal scraper, that'll come in handy. Uh, some gloves, a USB drive, and some screws and some Allen wrenches. So we'll take a look at those in a minute and get rid of all the stuff that we don't need. There's nothing in the box left over. And I'm assuming this is going to be a lot like most modern printers where assembly isn't really a whole big deal. So I'm gonna take a look really quick at the instructions because you never know. And yeah, they look pretty simple. Yep, take out of the box, remove the tape, remove all the styrofoam. Yeah, this is pretty simple. Uh, after we slide the actual uh, plate in, the build plate, you know, it just slides in like that. We look here, that slides in. We put the power cord in and we turn it on. <laughs> so this is installed at this point. It is ready to go right out of the gate. So that is pretty neat. So thanks for watching the whole video and getting through all the different pieces, parts, including assembly. I really appreciate it. Take it easy and have a great day.